I say, it is a joy to be with you here again this afternoon. The three months have quickly fled now since I was here last, and I think it's something like 30 years now when I first came to Arroyo de la Mir. I told John in a telephone conversation uh, we wouldn't be coming again because we never believed in going to the same place twice. Well, that's many occasions ago now. And it is a joy to bring and share fellowship with you once again. Also to bring the greetings and prayers of the Carmel Evangelical Church right down on the south coast of England, part of sunny Bournemouth. I had two messages first thing this morning, one from the deacon praying that the Lord would bless us here this day, and the other one from the preacher there at Carmel today, my son Aaron, who is ministering the Word of God there. And so we come to the Word of God now, and first of all we turn in the Word of God to the Epistle of Paul to the Hebrews chapter 2. And we read the first nine verses of the chapter. Hebrews chapter 2, and we read from verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels have he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, <laughs> What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honour, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. <coughs> But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, the, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Amen. So may the Lord bless his word to us at this time. As we come to the word of God this afternoon, I'd like us to look in particular at verse 9 of Hebrews chapter 2. We'll read the verse again. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And it is those words at the beginning of the verse form the title to our sermon this afternoon and also comprise of our text. We see Jesus. We see Jesus. And these words are introduced to us at the beginning of verse 9 by that little word, but. Three letters, B-U-T. And we're told, particularly by the late Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, of originally Wells and then England, that whenever a verse in Scripture begins with the word but, it has something important to say to us. Oh, we may have been taught at school, wherever we were taught, that it's not good English and not good language uh, to begin a sentence with the word but. But whenever we find a but in the Word of God, it's there because God has put it there in the inspired Word of God. 
and it's there because it has something important to say to others. And so we've established this already this afternoon, but we see Jesus. We see Jesus, and immediately this begs us to ask a question, does it not? If we see Jesus, then how do we see him? If we see Jesus, then how do we see him? One thing is sure by way of an answer to this question, that we do not see Jesus with the human eye. We do not look upon him as we see one another and can recognise one another, but we see Jesus with the eye of faith. Those things that have been revealed to us, or oh, those who lived upon the face of the earth, they were privileged to see the Lord Jesus Christ in his bodily form for those 33 years, and particularly the three years of his ministry. But for us at this time, we haven't yet seen Jesus face to face, and we see him with the eye of faith, do we not? And we come to think of these things this afternoon, and as we seek to have a view of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, I want us to think of three parts to that particular view. First of all, a panoramic view, and then a general view, and then a personal view. A panoramic view, a general view, and a personal view. We think first of all then of a wide and a panoramic view of the subject and of the text that we have before us this afternoon. Hebrews 2, 9, we see Jesus. And as we come to consider this text, before we look at it in a, a more fuller way, let's think of these verses that lead up to our text this afternoon. Just a brief overview of them, those verses that we read. Hebrews chapter 2 and the first uh, eight verses leading up to verse 9. Oh, when we come to verse 1, oh, we see the importance of these things, do we not? Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Oh, these things before us this afternoon, they are urgent things, they are important things. Oh, we're exhorted to give the more earnest heed and attention uh, to these things. They are the things spoken to us in the Word of God. And we need the Word of God hid within our hearts, for without these things it's so easy to let things slip, is it not? to let other things creep in, and even we who know and love him, to take our gaze off of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Oh, we're pointed in these verses as they continue. Oh, by being pointed to the angels, as we shall see on several occasions here, for if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast, that steadfast and true word there. And every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. In other words then, oh, if those things that we do, those things that have slipped in, or oh, those things that are not of God, oh, we're in danger of receiving a just reward, are we not? And then we come to verse 3. Often this verse is quoted upon its own as a text, but oh, it shows to us the importance and the urgency. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Oh, salvation from sin has been brought to us by the grace of God. It has been brought to us in and through his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Oh, we see then that these things are important, that if we put off seeking the Lord, if we do not heed his word, then we shall not escape the wrath and judgment of God. 
For we see here then that these things are put into context. We're thinking here of the church in the first century. And these things that are contained here in this epistle and the other books of the New Testament after the gospel, they point to those things that the Lord spoke to and of in his earthly ministry here upon earth. But the Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died upon the cross. He was buried in the tomb. He rose again and now he's ascended into heaven. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. But the work is ongoing through the gracious working of his Holy Spirit. And those things that the Lord began throughout his earthly ministry... They were continued in the days of the early Christian church, in the lives of the apostles whilst they were still upon the face of the earth. And now that the apostles one by one soon went to be with the Lord in glory, all the things of the Lord Jesus Christ are still preached and proclaimed by his servants. And then we see again the reference to angels in these verses. Oh, we think of the angels of heaven. What do these verses mean? Oh, the angel's home is in heaven. Unlike the Lord Jesus Christ, who we shall see, oh, they have never dwelt upon the face of the earth. There were times when they visited the earth for a specific purpose, to uh, reveal themselves unto certain individuals. But when that work was done, they didn't stay on the face of the earth. They returned to heaven, the place of their abode. And so we see the contrast before the Lord, between them and the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we read of these things, and we should think of them more fully when we get to verse 9. Oh, they were made, oh, the Lord Jesus Christ was made a little lower than the angels. But now he's crowned with glory and honour. And all things are put under his feet, in that he put all in subjection under him. And so we see then that these verses, they lead us to verse 9, do they not? But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And in these verses, as we shall see, do not we see the excellency of our God? Oh, we read here in verse 7, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, and this points us to the words of the psalmist, does it not, in Psalm 8 and verse 1. Psalm 8 and verse 1. Oh, and here we read, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. O has set thy glory above the heavens. And so this goes on. And it speaks to us of the way that the Lord has made him, the Lord Jesus Christ, in Psalm 8 and verse 5, a little lower than the angels, but now he's crowned with glory and honour. All oh, these verses of Hebrews are direct, uh, in Hebrews are direct fulfilment of Psalm 8, are they not? And they point us to our God. They point us to our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Oh, we see here in Psalm 8 and verse 1, the excellency of our God, even our triune God. For as we read in 1 John 5 and verse 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. And as we think of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, as we think of viewing him, he's the one there in the centre, God the Son, 
and yet co-equal with the Father. For as the Lord Jesus Christ declared whilst he was here upon earth, in John 10 and verse 13, I and my Father are one. Oh, we're building up this picture of the Lord Jesus Christ with the eye of faith. And as we do so, we realise that the Lord Jesus Christ was present at the time of creation, present where with the Father before the foundation of time. In John chapter 1, and the opening <laughs> verses of uh, this particular gospel, this particular book, we read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And again in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Colossians 1 and verse 16, we read these words. These words speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh, the only begotten, the firstborn of God. And we read, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And since the Lord Jesus Christ was there at the beginning, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 bears reference to this when God said, Let us make man in our own image. Who was God talking to? He was talking to the other parts of the Godhead, talking to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Oh, let us make man in our own image. Oh, the same was true again in the book of Genesis when uh, God looked at the confusion and the sin of the people of Babel. He says to them, let us go down, let us go down and see this tower which they have built. Again, who was he speaking to? The Lord Jesus Christ. And the Spirit, the Spirit was there in the beginning. The Spirit of God breathed upon the waters. And since our triune God was there at the creation, we see the Lord Jesus Christ. We see God himself through the works of creation. Mm. This may be a rather strange year this year might not have seen as much sun as we would like or too much sun at times here in Spain but always oh, we look upon the beauty of the earth and as we have the promise of God that seed time and harvest and summer and winter shall not cease as long as the earth remains oh as we see the beauty of the earth do not we see the Lord Jesus Christ co-equal with the Father manifested in these things? Oh, if we take time to stop and stare, to behold those things that have been made, made for God's glory and made for our providence, it points us to God through his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Those, as we have said, lived upon the face of the earth when the Lord Jesus Christ was here. They were privileged to see the Lord Jesus Christ in this way. But the Lord Jesus Christ is also revealed to us, not with the human eye as yet, but in the word of God, as we have seen from John 1 and those opening verses. The same was in the beginning with God. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And God has given us his Word that reveals the Lord Jesus Christ unto us as we read it day by day. 
So we see the Lord Jesus Christ in the Bible. Those sins that are taught there is not with the human eye. One day we shall see him, we who know and love him. We shall see him face to face and we shall be like him. But in the meanwhile we see the Lord Jesus Christ revealed in the word of God. We see the Lord Jesus Christ revealed in his dealings with mankind as our text speaks to us today. Even Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9. Oh, we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Oh, we see the Lord Jesus Christ in these things. So much is contained in one verse. Oh, as we've seen, he was made a little lower than the angels. This shows to us that he left heaven's glory, his heavenly home. And from our perspective, who would want to leave a home in heaven and come and dwell upon this sinful world? that we have to dwell in for a season. But in obedience to the will of God, the Lord Jesus Christ left his home in heaven and he came into this sinful world. This is what it means when we read that he was made a little lower than the angels. As we said earlier, they've never lived on the face of the earth, the angels, they've only visited it. But the Lord Jesus Christ made it his home throughout his earthly life and ministry. And when that was complete, oh, we see the purpose for his coming. Oh, he left heaven's glory and he lived among men for the suffering of death. Even that cruel death of crucifixion, that death upon the cross, paying the price of our sin, doing that which we could not do for ourselves. But oh, we can rejoice this afternoon that for the Lord Jesus Christ, death was not the end. His burial in the tomb was not final. But we go on to read of his resurrection and ascension, for he's crowned with glory and honour. Oh, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, did he not? And he did all this. In his death upon the cross, he bore the sin of the world, but he bore our sin as individuals, unknown unto God. And now he's crowned with glory and honour. And as we think of this, oh, it's all of God's grace that such a thing should have been done. Oh, when we stop to think of the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, all oh, brought to us through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, it's overwhelming, is it not? It moves us to tears to think that he should love us in such a way as this, that he should come and die for our sin upon the cross. Oh, we see then the facts. We see this panoramic view of Hebrews 2 and verse 9. And having established the facts, we now go on to consider what is the general view of Christ. What is the general view of Christ when we say, but we see Jesus? How did people see him? In that day when he was here upon earth, going throughout his, through his earthly ministry. We have a reference to this in Matthew 22 and verse 42. Oh, wherever the Lord Jesus Christ went, wherever he taught, wherever he fulfilled his earthly ministry, oh, there were his critics, there were his enemies who were never far away. Oh, they're described as scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees and lawyers and so forth. And we have that incident in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, recorded for us. And as we come 
to verse 42. Oh, previous to this we read that the Sadducees have been disputing with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Pharisees, they were never far away and had their turn as well. But the Lord Jesus Christ had put the Sadducees to silence. In Matthew 22 and verse 35, Oh, a lawyer, so it was his turn to question the Lord Jesus Christ about the commandments. And the Lord Jesus Christ did not evade the question that was put to him, even though he had something more important to say to that lawyer and to others there. He answers the question by quoting the commandments. And then when we come to Matthew 22 and verse 42, he puts the question directly to that lawyer, directly to those who were there. But whom say ye, what to think ye of Christ? What think ye of Christ, whose son is he? And that lawyer, oh, he could only grapple with an answer in the terms of uh, those things that they knew of David. And so he could not see that lawyer himself, the way in which the Lord Jesus Christ was great David's greater son and even the son of God. But the question is asked of the scribes and Pharisees, oh, the Lord says to them, what think ye of Christ? Question has been asked time and time again to our by given to others. What think ye of Christ? Who is Jesus? Who is our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ? And you know there's many, many answers that will be given to this question in this day and age in which we live. If we were to go out of this place, and if we were to stop people and ask them this question this afternoon, what think ye of Christ? Who is Jesus? We get all sorts of answers. Oh, some, they only know the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus in the swear words that they use, that they take the name of our blessed Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and they blaspheme. It is nothing more than a swear word that they use along with all their other swear words. And it's so uh, done so often and uh, without thought, is it not? In the times when my wife and I worked in the Christian bookshop, we even had customers come in and they blaspheme in a Christian bookshop. Oh, no knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just a name to be taken in vain. Others may answer the question by saying, Well, Jesus, isn't he someone that we read about in a book called the Bible? Don't know how many people read books in this day and age in which we live. They'd have to have it on their smartphone or online, would they not? And it's possible to do that. But to them... Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ is just a character in a book, and they regard the Bible as just another book that they might have or might not have on their bookshelves. Some may go as far as answering the question by saying, wasn't he someone to do with history? Someone who was around the time of Julius Caesar, the time when the Romans invaded Britain, and then went back to and invaded Jerusalem and ruled there at the birth of Christ. Someone who lived in history, and as far as they're concerned, someone who died, and they believe that when you're dead, you're dead. That's a lie of the devil. Oh, when we're dead, we have to face the judgment. And without Christ, and without eternity secured in heaven for those who repent, it's eternity in hell, but these people don't see this, do they not? And then they would answer the question others, isn't Jesus someone to do with religion? And so they think of religion, and they think of 
the religion and all the false religions of the world as well and they're so confused they point the finger and they say well I'm not religious so it doesn't apply to me does it not oh but the oh Lord Jesus Christ oh that Christianity is not a religion it's labeled as a religion but Christianity is far more is it not the true church of Christ is far more because the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church is he not and then others may feel that the Lord Jesus Christ is someone associated with special occasions occasions like Christmas and Easter maybe harvest Thanksgiving and other seasons of the year and that's as far as they go uh, thinking of the Lord Jesus Christ and we see in all of this that many fail to really recognize who Jesus is but as we turn again to Hebrews 2 and verse 9 those truths that are contained that we have thought of there oh we see the Lord Jesus Christ as the Christ of the cross the one who suffered and died there and lifted up to die that we might know forgiveness and salvation in him according to his will oh this is all of love all of grace all of mercy far beyond that that we deserve when we think of it it's almost beyond our comprehension no words to fully <coughs> describe it and as we think of this we see the Lord Jesus Christ also as the coming King here in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9 of these verses here we think of that work that the Lord began upon earth that work that was continued by the Apostles that work that continues by the people of the Lord today in this day and age in which we live but that day is coming when these things will be completed when the Lord Jesus Christ Oh, he shall appear in glory, and he will receive his own unto himself, never more to die. And those who know and love him by his grace shall be with him. They shall see him as they, he is, and they shall know him in the courts of heaven above. As we read in Acts 1 and verse 11, words spoken at the time of the ascension of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. O oh, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, as ye have seen go into heaven, shall so which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Oh, we've been thinking of the views of others and how they see Jesus, or to be truthful, how they don't see Jesus to their peril. And having seen the views of others, how do we see Jesus as individuals? And so we come to our third point this afternoon. What of a personal view? of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Oh, can we echo the words of Hebrews 2 and verse 9 and say, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Oh, we come now not so much to think of the views of others not just to make a cursory or pomeranian view of this verse but to examine ourselves and where we stand before god and before <coughs> our savior the jesus christ one common thing is sure that by our very birth we have sinned 
In Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. That little word all, it doesn't mean everybody else except us. It doesn't mean some people, it means all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we need to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not just to see him, we need to know him within our hearts and our lives. Mm -hmm. Knowing him as our saviour. Knowing that our sins are forgiven. That we're saved from sin, we're saved from the wrath of God. And owning him as Lord of our lives. And what does that mean? But as we live our lives day by day, we are living for him. That work of grace is done within our hearts. Oh, we should seem to be different. Oh, some people say that a Christian is no different to anybody else except they choose to go to church on the Lord's day. Nothing could be farther than the truth. A Christian is a new person in Christ Jesus, Amen. a person who is living for God and living for our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ <laughs> and we're in his house on his day because that's the place where God meets with us, Amen. that's the place where God would have us to be. Not that it means that we have to wait from one Sunday to the other. For those who know and love him, he's promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And in every part of our lives we should be seen to be different. <coughs> Not doing those things which others do, and doing things that others don't do. And then such as he equips us, serving him throughout our lives, day by day. Oh, we can turn for help here. Oh, to Acts chapter 17 and verse 28. Acts chapter 17 and verse 28. At this point, the Apostle Paul on his missionary travels, he'd reached the city of Athens. And what a culture city, what an academic city that was. Oh, he even found an altar among all the other altars that has its inscription yeah. to the unknown God. Yeah. Oh, they didn't want to miss a God out and all the many altars that they had. Oh, such was their sad state. But it's the words of verse 28 that we turn to now in Acts 17. Oh, it puts things in perspective. <coughs> For in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. Oh, when we know Jesus in this way, others will see him by our lives and our witness to him. So Lord Jesus Christ has said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Oh, as we know the Lord Jesus Christ by his grace, and if we come into this place today not knowing him, could it be that you've been brought in today that you might see Jesus as you've never seen him before with the eye of faith, and will reach out and be drawn <coughs> unto him for forgiveness and salvation? Oh, we have every evidence in this place today that the Lord is saving souls, that the angels are rejoicing in the courts of heaven above, not just here, but in other places. A grandson of mine who professed the Lord just a few weeks ago. Oh, we pray that you may be among them if as yet you do not know him. And so we've been thinking of our text this afternoon. Our time is gone. There's much more that we could say. But we reiterate these words. But we see Jesus. We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death crowned with glory and honour that he by the grace of God 
should taste death for every man. As we think of this, there's a gospel song that has been sung in England. I don't know if it's sung in other places. It goes something like this. And it says, standing somewhere in the shadows, we see Jesus. Standing somewhere in the shadows, we see Jesus. And it goes on, he's the friend who always cares and understands. And then it concludes, and we, somewhere in the shadows, we will see him and will know him by the now prince in his hand. Right. Do we see Jesus like this today? Can we say, but we see Jesus, crowned with glory and honour, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Amen.